Despite more than 2,300 confirmed human cases of H1N1 flu in 24 countries, results of the so far mild outbreak have not cropped up in the American swine herd. But concerns remain among the nation's pork producers that a widespread outbreak of H1N1 in American swine could further damage the industry's worldwide reputation. Early this week, America's second largest pork export market of China placed a trade ban on all U.S. pork products. China is one of 22 countries so far to enforce full or partial bans on U.S. pork, which could spell trouble for $4.7 billion in annual American pork exports. Several trade groups, including the American Farm Bureau and the National Pork Producers Council, have called for a lifeline from USDA. The NPPC suggested this week that USDA purchase $50 million in pork products for food pantries and hunger relief donations. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack has pledged to support pork producers around the country and in his native state of Iowa, but exact details from USDA have yet to materialize. Another group looking for federal assistance is a team of Iowa State University researchers developing new flu vaccines for swine. That it really is unknown at this time whether the existing commercial vaccines will prevent this virus infection in pigs. Uh, we know Dr. Hank Harris, human, professor in animal CDC science and production animal medicine, says his lab can create an effective H1N1 vaccine for swine in as little as two months' time. According to Harris, ISU lab technicians do not need a sample of the live virus. Using electric current combined with a technique called RNA backbone, a synthetic version of the original virus and a subsequent vaccine could be created. The sequence of this virus isolated from humans in Mexico and then California, that sequence was known in about three or four days. And so that's in the public domain and we simply take that sequence and generate a synthetic piece of the virus and that's why we can do it so quickly. Despite technological breakthroughs, there are still financial hurdles for researchers. Harris and his colleagues need federal funds of nearly $200,000 to begin development of the H1N1 vaccine. Even if the vaccine is developed in two months' time, a USDA approval process could stretch into 2011. But Harris emphasized an H1N1 outbreak in American swine is not a question of if or when, but of severity. I feel confident that the virus will occur in pigs and in the United States. Whether or not it will cause serious problems in the pigs is, is debatable. It, may, it could go unrecognized for a long time. 